now. Now I'm going to start with the the first the first uh, slide. GBC, as I said, GBC Desktop GBC is an open source development project uh, that allows users to manage, use, and produce geographical information. It's it has a very active community that currently uh, has this uh, community from different countries around the world. It uh, it's also an investment in a supportive development model based on uh, shared knowledge. Um, okay, the main product, there are several GBC products. The main one is uh, GBC Desktop, as I told you some minutes before. It's, uh, it's, uh, it can be used in Linux, Windows, and, and Mac. Uh, there, are, it's translated to more than thirty languages. It has it's uh, user friendly. Easy, it's easy to use. It can be uh, custom uh, customized, so uh, users can uh, install the plugins or extensions that that they want. Here we can see the the main uh, type of documents that we can load in in GBC. We will see them at the videos uh, later. Here uh, I was uh, at this slide uh, before. From GBC, we can load uh, vector and raster layers. For vector layers, we can load, for example, DXF, GML, shape files. We also can manage the, the alphanumeric information of these vector files. We also can export them to to new uh, to new formats we also can get the information of the different elements we uh, we can apply a symbology for example to create thematic thematic marks we also can label the the elements the elements of the of these uh, vector layers we also have uh, graphical editing uh, tools so we can create a new we can digitalize for example the, the parcels uh, on and off the photo for example we also have uh, an ex scripting model etc we also have uh, advanced geoprocessing with more than 300 vector and raster geoprocessing models there are several uh, geoprocesses the processes like uh, buffer intersection merge, uh, join, and uh, for example, for vectorization, for hydrological uh, parameters, etc. In reference to raster and remote sensing uh, layers, we can manage the, the bands. We also can export them or clip uh, raster layers. We can apply color tables or transparency. By pixel or by uh, or for the whole uh, image there are uh, we can apply we can see the statistics of the different uh, images and the histograms uh, we also can vectorize the raster files to create uh, new vector layers from them in reference to the special uh, data infrastructure we can uh, from GBC desktop, we can access to different uh, remote services. For example, web map service, web feature service, web coverage service. The web map tile service that is an improvement of the web map service is uh, it's quick, it's very quick service. And catalog and gazetteer uh, clients. The most one of the most important extensions of DBC is three, the 3D view extension. Uh, from a 2D view, we can create a 3D view where we can load uh, raster and vector files. We also can upload uh, digital elevation, elevation models. And if we change th uh, something on the 2D view, for example, the legend, it's synchronized uh, on the uh, 3D view. So at the same time, we can, we can synchronize the, the changes. One of the most important 
functionalities or tools in GBC is uh, that we can apply uh, symbology and we can create our own uh, symbol libraries. For example, we have uh, if we have uh, several icons or symbols in our computer, we can create our own uh, symbol library. And there are also uh, several symbol libraries from that we can download from GBC, from the Adams Manager in GBC. For example, for forestry, infrastructures, tourism, tourism etc. The other product about uh, GBC is GBC Mobile, that is used for field work. The main characteristics is that we can load uh, several formats, vector and raster files, and uh, we can access to remote services, for example, web map service. We can apply symbology and label the, the vector files. We have GPS support. We can uh, we have several editing tools to create new uh, new polygons, new lines, or or points, for example. Another product is GBC Educa. At this moment, there's a prototype, but we are working on a new uh, version, a new distribution. This is a customization of GBC Desktop. Uh, for education. So uh, when the the subject works uh, with a, a data with geographical component, teachers can use uh, GBC Educa, for example, to show uh, the rivers of a country, the political or physical maps, etc. And it can be adapted to different levels or education systems, for example, for primary or secondary school. The last product of GBC is GBC Online, that is a solution for implementing spatial data infrastructures. And it allows to reduce the implementation costs. With GBC Online, we can share geographic information at the cloud, we can create uh, geo portals, for example, for from the main uh, geo portal, we can create several small uh, small ones, like a geo portal for tourism, another one for health, for example, and it uh, includes uh, a mobile application where users can, uh, for example, uh, inform about uh, an incident at the street uh, from the this mobile application. Uh, uh, tomorrow there will be uh, an, um, a presentation about this product, about uh, GBC Online. What we are working on uh, in GBC Desktop. At this moment, uh, the following the next version will have uh, several changes, changes in uh, architecture and installer. The, uh, for example, it will include uh, GDAL, and a new geometry library. It will support uh, Java 8, and uh, a new, there will, it, it will have a new installer for 64 bits. There will be also an automatic generator of uh, Debian packages. The main, the main uh, improvements for, for users is that, are that uh, it will include it will include the uh, projection file uh, writing and uh, reading. If we have a, a shape file, for example, with this file, we can, uh, GBC will recognize it and it will be loaded uh, correctly. And when we export to another, to a new uh, file, it will be create this, this file. With the OGR and GDAL uh, library, we, we will be able to access to new formats, like GeoJSON, GML, etc. There will be our support, and it's a very important library for statistics. We also ha will have uh, the linear reference system and dynamical segmentation, several improvements in the scripting model, new distributions, and, uh, for Mac, uh, from this version, for, from the next version, for example, for Windows 64 bits and, and Mac, and new editing tools, for example, the uh, parallel 
and, and other tools. About TBC community, the TBC desktop application is translated to more than 30 languages, all of them, all of them by uh, volunteers. It's downloaded in more than uh, 100 countries. There are several mailing lists. The main ones are for uh, users and developers, and in English and Spanish. They are the main one, the main ones by, but there are another list, mailing list for the different communities. For example, for the Italian, the Brazilian, the Argentina, etc. And every year there are several conferences about GBC around the world. There's the International GBC Conference in, Val in Valencia, in Spain, at the end of November and beginning of December. Uh, there are uh, Latin American and Caribbean uh, GBC Conference. It's in a different country every year in Latin America. This year they, they will be held in Uruguay, and then there are uh, another world, another local conferences like in Brazil, in Uruguay, in Venezuela, in Chile, etc. Here we can see the the GBC website where we can download download GBC. We, we have access to the different mailing lists. Where if you have any doubt or question or problem with the GBC project or GBC application, you can use the mailing lists. And here you can see the, the, the links to the different uh, mailing lists. We have information about the, the events, the different conferences, etc. There's another website. In this case, I had reached gbc.org, where we can find the uh, GBC case studies. In this, in, at this moment, there are more than 200 uh, case studies by the by the uh, sent by the community or uh, from the GBC association. So look at, you can look for them by sector, by countries, by software. We also have a GBC blog, uh, that is blog.gbc.org, where you can find all the information, the news about the project, the new extensions, new conferences, new scripts, etc. We also have a planet and a Twitter and Facebook accounts, where you can uh, follow us and receive all the information, the news about the, the project. The GBC Association. The GBC project had a fast evolution from 2004 with a, an, an increasing uh, community of users and developers. And uh, because of that, a collaborate, a collaborated uh, infrastructure was needed and a professional structure in order to have a sustain, sustainability of the, the project. And the GBC Association was born at uh, 2009, and the main objectives of the association were to uh, promote free and open source software for geomatics and the development of GBC. It was uh, the uh, it was the GBC association promotes development the development of a new business uh, model based on cooperation and shared knowledge. And a part of the benefits from these uh, business activities, like uh, training, the very new developments, developments, etc., will be back into the GBC project, and they will help to to develop uh, new extensions, to fix the the errors, the bugs, or the, of the application, etc. There are several mem uh, members. There are uh, small and medium enterprises, uh, full members that uh, take decisions uh, into the uh, GBC. There are also uh, collaborators that are small and medium enterprises that want to make business uh, with GBC, for example, training. And there are honor members. 
the main objective of the honor members is to uh, spread GPC. For example, they are uh, public administrations, universities, technological institutes, etc. And now I'm going to show you the uh, one moment I'm going to show you the first video about GBC. Here we can see the, the main type of documents uh, that we can load in, uh, that we can create in GBC. One moment. Here we can see the main uh, type of documents that we, that we can uh, load in GBC. For example, the views where you can uh, load the, the cartography, the table, attribute tables with, where they are the alphanumeric information, the maps that is the, uh, they are the out, uh, graphical output, the GBC of the different uh, views. We also can create map sheets, or charts and for example now we are going to uh, create a new view for that we have to select the uh, reference system we can we have to select the refer reference system system of the uh, the view in this case we are going to select uh, the geographical uh, coordinates and after that, we have to apply, and here we can see the, uh, the reference system. Now we are going to add uh, new layers. We can include uh, local files or uh, remote services. Uh, for local files, we can load uh, raster and vector files. So here we are, going, we are uh, loading a uh, Japan, a map of Japan, a uh, layer of Japan with the prefectures. We can change the the symbol, the symbols, the symbology. We can apply by, for example, unit value values. In this moment, uh, by the the name of the prefectures. Here we can see the different names, and after applying, we can see every prefecture in a different color. We also can uh, add a locator. Uh, there's a, a small window at the view here where we can load the, loca uh, the, uh, the layer and it allows us to uh, move on the view in an easy way. We also can, for example, we can, uh, can, we can label the, the different uh, elements, for example, by the, by the name of the prefecture. We can select the, the head or a fixed value or uh, depending on a, uh, on a field, and we can select the units, for example, meter, meters or uh, pixels. We are changing the, the size. And here we can see every uh, prefecture by, with uh, 
its name. Now we are going to see, we are going to see another type of legend. In this case, by intervals. It's for uh, for numerical fields. In this case, the area. And we are we will see the smallest uh, prefectures in white color and the biggest ones in dark blue uh, color. depending on the area. We also can load, uh, we also can open the attribute table, that is the alphanumerical information of this, of this uh, file. If we select several elements on the view, they are selected on the table, and if we select on the table, they are selected on the view. We can get the information, the different elements. We can select on the view. If you use the control key, we can select several elements at the same, at the same time. And they are selected on the view. We can use that tool in order to move up the selection, the, the elements uh, select. We can remove selection. Okay, and we're going to see the next one. It's about the layouts. If we have a view with the different uh, the automatic map, in this case, the, the prefectures of Japan, we can uh, create a map. We have to select the page uh, size. And we have to select the view, or this one, or uh, a new one. In this case, we select the deal with the prefectures of Japan. And now we can change the zoom, but in this case, the scale of the, of the map will change. And now we can insert the different elements. For example, we can insert the, the north. We select the, the symbol and the framework of the view, because if we uh, rotate the view, the north will rotate at the same time. We also can draw uh, rectangles or polylines or points, etc. We also can insert a, a text, for example, the title of the map. We can change the type of font, the size, the color, etc. We also can insert the, the scale. And if we associate the scale to the view, if we change the zoom at the view, the scale uh, will change. You have to select the, the intervals. And here we can see the, the scale of our map. We also can insert legend. In this case, with the 
different prefectures of Japan. Here we can see the, the layer. And each uh, prefecture is shown at the, at the map. We also can insert an image from our computer, from our disk. For example, we are going to insert the, the GPC icon. And finally, we can export to PDF, to a PDF file, or we can print to our printer. Okay. Next video is about the editing tools. Here we can see we are going to create a, a new view. We have we are going to change the reference system because it's a uh, north of photo of Helsinki in Finland now we are adding the the layer and we are going to to draw several buildings so for that firstly we can see several buildings and we have to create a new layer. Select it. We select the, the name of the output file. We have to select the type of uh, geometry, in this case, or surface, point or line in this case we are going to select the surface because they are, because they are polygons we can add a new field for this file it's a string type it can be numeric numerical too and the length of the of the field we select the option to add the layer to the to the view and now we are going to start editing in order to draw the new the new uh, polygons okay There's one finally we close we finish the polygon or we close polyline we call it close polygon and it creates the polygon. We also can select the option, the arc option. It's useful for rows, for example. And we are going to see now another, another tool. In this case, the split geometry. For example, this, uh, this last geometry. So we cut the geometry and we have uh, two different ones now and we can remove the the other one because it's not it wasn't uh, correctly we also can edit uh, the vertexes of a polygon we can insert one or remove one of them
you also can create internal polygon, for example, for this polygon, we select the polygon tool, and we draw this polygon. And now we have an internal polygon empty inside the, the other one. We also can create a polygon inside this one. We use the autocomplete uh, polygon. And here we have two different polygons. And the second one follows the line, the vertexes of the previous one, the other one. We also can copy the uh, geometry, duplicate it, or move the geometry we can rotate we also can select the, the angle the degrees in this case, 90 degrees. Also, I can scale the, the geometry. Okay, so scale factor now. For example, the double. And it, it scales the, the geometry. And we also can remove, we can undo, for example, the last up, the last tool, or uh, more than one, uh, more than one tool at the same time. And we also can join geometries. For example, we, we have two different geometries. We can join them in order to have uh, only one. Finally, we have to end editing and we have the new layer. We, at the attribute table, we have several the different elements and we would be able to edit this. Uh, elements. For example, it was a text uh, field and we can complete them the different geometries with the uh, different values. And editing and we have this new layer with the graphical elements and the alphanumerical information at the attribute table. Okay. And finally, I'm going to show you the geoprocessing, some of the geoprocessing uh, tools. In this moment, we have the railways of Japan and the prefectures and we have the toolbox with more than 300 geoprocesses. We have buffer, result, for, for example we are going to apply a buffer for the railways. We will have 100 meters in each side, the left and, and the right side. We are going to select the dissolve entities option and run uh, the borders. And we select the name of the output file, in this case to a temporary, only a temporary file. And after processing that, we have a new polygon layer, in this case. 
we have the new layer and as we can see we have only one polygon because we selected the option dissolve entities so we have only an only polygon now we are going to apply for example an intersection uh, we want to add to to get the buffer the the area of each uh, municipality of each uh, prefecture so we are going to intersect intersect the buffer layer with the uh, Japan prefectures uh, layer. I want to get the polygonal line layers and after processing here we can see we are going to see the, the toolbox at the same time while it's processing. We have uh, the for vector layers, the dissolve, the spatial join, merge, join, etc. We also have the sextante models. We have for hydrological analysis. We can create digital elevation models. We can we have uh, different type of buffers, uh, your statistics for fire model, fire. Uh, modeling and for raster and vector files there are a lot of uh, geo processes for vectorization topology etc and our geo process has finished we can see topology for example and vectorization and in our view our geo processes has finished so now we have the area of the different prefectures we we had only one polygon before and now we have one polygon for every for each uh, prefecture Well, so uh, Alvaro has told me that the, the questions part, the chat, uh, didn't work. I, I don't know what would happen. So uh, sorry for the, for, the, uh, for the inconvenience. And you can ask uh, at the mailing list, uh, as, I, as I told you, or uh, at the mail, uh, the GBC uh, mail, the contact uh, page at the website, at the GBC website. And uh, I tell you that uh, if you like this type of, of events and all the work that uh, we are we are doing in, in GBC, in the GBC project, uh, I we encourage you to to help us uh, contributing to the GBC project. There's a website where you can uh, contribute, and this uh, these contribute uh, contributions are for uh, new developments, for uh, fixing bugs, uh, etc. And uh, thank you very much for uh, for following for uh, this first webinar. And sorry for the inconvenience for. Uh, the questions at the at the chat. Thank you very much. Bye bye.